Hello and welcome to the International Pentagon Challenge. My name is Kai Knight and together we'll be embarking on a very special football manager journey where we'll aim to try and win every major international competition in all five continents, forcing our hand to play with hundreds of different types of players and most importantly hopefully create loads of awesome different types of tactics along the way. Once that's complete, only then are we allowed to set our sights on the biggest of all goals, the FIFA World Cup. How many nations will we have to manage until we work our way to the top? How many dodgy names will we have to pronounce along the way? So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Alright, hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of the International Pentagon Challenge. Now, kicking things off, I just want to apologise. I am very, very ill over uh, at the moment, and I've been ill over the whole Christmas period, so my voice might be a bit kind of come and go. I'm making sure I'm constantly like drinking hot fluids to try and make sure I've still got a voice. But as you can see on screen, we do have the African Cup of Nations coming up. And to be honest, I don't want to wait until I'm no longer ill to play the African Cup of Nations. So we're going to record it anyways. And if my voice happens to disappear halfway through, you'll get subtitles or something like that. But no, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Uh, this episode, though, we're not going to actually play the first game of the African Cup of Nations. Um, obviously, we want each... African Cup of Nations game to basically be an episode. Uh, we are in Group D, which we'll take a look at um, in a sec. And uh, each team only plays each other once in a neutral venue, which in this case is the Ivory Coast. So, yeah, um, it won't be too many episodes, at least to get the group stages over and done with, I don't think. And we might not even get out the group stages, uh, because taking a look at our group, we've been handed a very, very, very hard group. I'm not really quite sure how this has happened, given that we were obviously seeded top of our group in the qualifiers. But obviously, Ghana and Algeria, something must have gone wrong in their qualification to result in this group. We've got Algeria, Ghana and Zimbabwe. Now, Zimbabwe, I'm not really too worried about. However, Ghana, 20th in the world. And you don't really need me to tell you that Ghana are one of the best teams in Africa. Quality players, just by looking at their top players, Andre Ayew. Um, first one on the list and Algeria now Algeria I feel like are probably a little bit underwhelming at the moment in this save simply because they've got a world ranking of 66 now all I'd be saying is is, is if I was manager of this Algerian national side with players like Bentaleb Ghulam, Brahimi, Mahrez, Fagouli like you know just players like that even though it's 2021 I feel like I would easily easily have Algeria in like the top 30 in the world and be competing for World Cups. You know, like not competing to necessarily maybe win a World Cup, but I'd feel pretty confident at qualifying for a World Cup. So kind of disappointing to see that we've ended up with them in our group because I feel like it's a little bit misleading because I do feel like they are going to be incredibly tough to beat. Uh, obviously, we are going to have to make sure we beat at least one of them if we're going to try and hope to get second place. But hey, coming into this, we've had some pretty good form. So for this episode, because I'm not actually going to play this game, let's give you a run through of what we're going to look at. Uh, obviously we've played a lot of friendlies since the last World Cup qualifier against Benin, all against teams who have qualified for the African Cup of Nations themselves. Um, some poor teams, some stronger teams, just to see how we fare. Um, and because it's 2021, I want to just kind of go to the Champions League, the Premier League and whatnot, and just take a quick look at who's ended up winning them leagues that way going into our first kind of major tournament as part of this international pentagon challenge we at least know kind of what's going on in the world and we'll maybe take a look at the most expensive transfers as well so i'm not really going to bother taking a look at highlights but uh obviously as you've probably figured out by now we beat namibia to qualify for the african cup of nations we did qualify top of our group and this was something we discussed in the last episode um and even though you can argue that oh well, we had a higher goal difference than Morocco and finished first because of that extra goal that we kind of got from replaying the Malawi game, which we won 2-0 on camera, but ended up being 3-0 when being replayed because the game wasn't saved and whatnot. Um, even if we'd had the same goal difference, we'd have still finished first because we've scored more goals than Morocco. Uh, let's see, does it give me access? It does give me access to the full table. I've seen it. I'm just... Okay, here we go. So if we take a look at Group E, if we both had eight, basically... Um, and we'd only won 2-0 rather than 3-0, we'd have still 
have finished top of the group with 14 goals in our favour. Yeah, so I'm not really too fussed about that. But that's that out of the way. So we have qualified for the African Cup of Nations. We had a friendly against Gabon. They didn't have uh, Aubameyang, who currently plays for Real Madrid, because he has um, retired from international duty. But still, Gabon, a very good team in Africa, won that 2-0. Um, wasn't really ideal, because we went through a lot of phases with injured players. Like, as you can notice, Gelson wasn't really playing, but it's good to see that we've got Yano who can step up and score goals. A little bit older than Gelson, but still a very similar type of player. We're not going to take a look at the goals because they're just friendlies and this episode would become too long, to be honest. I want to try and get us in the African Cup of Nations ASAP. We then played Rwanda, um, beat them 3-0. We then played Cape Verde, who are very well ranked at the moment in the world rankings, and we smashed them 2-0. To be fully honest, like, given that they won their qualification group for the African Cup of Nations. We played really well against them. And then we beat Zambia, Zambia? I'm thinking Namibia, Zambia 3-1. And then beat South Africa 2-0. Now, the only issue I really have is that South Africa played us off the park. But I think it kind of looks like they were a lot better than they really were. Because a lot of them shots were, like, from the edge of the box, to be fair. Or, like... 35 yarders they were shooting a lot from distance and it was really annoying with comprehensive highlights on so it looks a little bit more one-sided than it was but what's important really is that we're unbeaten and for that reason we have actually basically found under my management angola basically are 12 games unbeaten and it is a new angola record so we can take a look at records somewhere so most games won in a row 11 2nd of September 2020 to 4th of June 2021, under my management. Most games without losing 13, once again, under my management. And most games lost in a row, certainly not under my management. That was what got the previous manager sacked. Um, and uh, I think that could have been me. It could have been, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, so awesome stuff. As well, rankings-wise... We basically also broke Angola's record for highest ever world ranking. Uh, we were 28th in March. At the moment, I think we're like 31st. But obviously, it changes depending on other people's results as well. But the fact that we crept into the top 30 world rankings was really astonishing. Um, obviously, it was always going to happen because we've been very, very good. And beating Morocco obviously helped with that in the African Cup of Nations qualifiers. But it's really good and satisfying to see how goddamn well we've done so far managing Angola in our first job. And again, I do really put it down. If you look at our results, we've always at least scored two goals, bar this Namibia game, and obviously where we lost to Morocco. Generally speaking, we've always scored at least two goals. Yes, we've been leaky at the back, but really our game plan... We want to try and utilise our players to their best of ability, which is attacking players, and it is working for us so far. But against Ghana and Algeria, it is, of course, going to be a completely different kettle of fish. And we still have two games against Senegal to deal with, who are currently the 12th best team in the world, apparently. So, yeah, that's going to be tough. But that to one side. Let's take a look at what's happening in this save in 2021. Okay, so we'll start off taking a look at La Liga. So, obviously, Barcelona won 17-18, then Real Madrid, then Atletico Madrid, then Barcelona again this year. Uh, Atletico in second place, Real Madrid in third place. Other than that, not, not really, you know, too many surprises. Uh, Premier League-wise, Man United are on a roll. <laughs> we all know how overpowered they are every year in Football Manager. And I believe they won the treble this year, so credit where it's due. Jose Mourinho is still the manager. Uh, they even reached the Champions League final, uh, where they lost to Real Madrid. Uh, so even though Real Madrid finished third in La Liga, they still won the Champions League. So, you know, fair play to them. Man City also won a Champions League in 18-19. Bayern won the 17-18 one. And United took the 1921. So that pretty much sums it up, you know, from that perspective. Uh, Liga 1, uh, PSG have retained it after Monaco, 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 Monaco winning three in a row. Uh, Bundesliga wise, Bayern and uh, Red Bull Leipzig are kind of fighting for it at the moment. Uh, Bayern are defending champions. Serie A, pretty much Juventus, as you'd probably. Anticipate Portuguese league 
Benfica have finally been knocked off their throne by Sporting Lisbon. Unfortunately, not down to Gelson because he can't basically get a game in the first team. I'd really do wish he'd leave them. It would help him develop so much better as a player. Uh, and Galatasaray are starting to regain their dominance in Turkey as well. Uh, AZ Alkmaar, wow, have apparently won a Dutch title. Feyenoord as well. Um, winning three in a row like a lot of these are surprising to me as well because I've not been keeping in the loop and championship wise Swansea win it this year with Leeds going up via the playoffs and Brighton also getting promoted since we're here we might as well you probably already know this from a previous episode um, Germany are the current holders of the World Cup Morocco obviously holders of the African Cup of Nations. We're going to try and put an end to that, even though, to be honest, we're probably not going to win the African Cup of Nations. But if we do well, it might help us get another job. Uh, Asian Cup holders are Japan. Last winners of the Euros, I think, could be Germany or France. I think we may have taken a look at this in the past. It, no, Portugal. Portugal? Portugal have won it twice in a row, apparently. I did not know that. But yeah, okay. And Bulgaria made the final. Okay, um, I mean, I'd like to think that I might be competing in the 2024 Euros. I don't know yet. Obviously, there's no kind of pressure on me to win the African Cup of Nations before I go to a different continent. I'm just going to keep building up till we win our first trophy. And then once we won kind of that trophy, that's when we'll try and apply for other jobs. So I could easily, quite right now, like jump from Angola to a European team and go for the Euros. But once we've actually completed the challenge for Europe and won the Euros, that's when we'd probably consider jumping away. And then we'll worry about the World Cup in the end. Because once we have like seven trophies to our name, I've got no idea how the game this year kind of reacts to my reputation. Has my reputation increased? Oh, it has. I didn't realise that. So my reputation has increased. That's ace. Basically, like a few games ago when I took a look at it, it was only 15. And that kind of answers my question. So it is showing that my reputation is slowly increasing. And it could be down to the fact that I'm now obviously going to be managing the African Cup of Nations. If we make it past the group stages, then hopefully, hopefully it increases further. Because the more it increases, the higher chances we're basically going to get of being able to jump to a top, top nation and try and manage them. And there's always a little bit less competitions for them jobs than there are for club jobs. So I think hopefully we'll be okay. Um, I think we were punching above our weight to get given the Angola job in the first place, but as we're seeing, it really is paying off. So if we can try and basically win, you know, five trophies in each continent before then worrying about the World Cup, I think it would then put us in a real healthy position to actually go and chase after, you know, a top, top nation to manage uh, where we can seriously contend for the World Cup. Um, the CONCACAF Gold Cup, uh, current holders, United States, that's not really surprising. Uh, probably Australia for this one. Um, but I mean, they actually fall into the Asian Cup, don't they? So that's kind of irrelevant, but New Zealand are the champions of that. International competition-wise, Copa America, Uruguay are the holders, with Chile getting uh, the odd trophy or two beforehand. So, my voice is starting to disappear. One thing I also wanted to discuss was that we did have a point where Enzola got injured, and I ended up bringing in a youngster who I want you guys to kind of take a look at. He's called... Regis Matondo and he actually managed to grab two goals for us and basically it reached a point where players were injured friendly games I want to try and see how my youth teams are doing because to be fair we got past the group stages and the under 20 world cup so it goes to show that we have some decent youth players coming through the ranks I do keep an eye out on the under 23s because if we're in the Angola job for quite a long period of time it's important that we know what new youth is coming through um, because it's 2021 and these international saves move fast. It won't be too long until we're going to be competing in like the Euros or the African Cup of Nations or a World Cup where most players are going to be regens anyways. So as we can see, a very, very good replacement for the likes of um, uh, Nzola. And he's actually made our African Cup of Nations squad not quite as good as we can see. If we compare attributes, you can see that they are both the same type of player roughly. Matondo, a little bit taller, I believe. Um... Decent finishing, um, heading could be a little bit better, but because he's big, he did score headers for us. Good work crate, physically very good, decent aggression. I think that's a useful trait to have when you're a target man up against centre-backs and whatnot. So really chuffed that we've got a player like him coming through. And to be fair to Nzola, he's not that old either. So these two players coming through, it'll be important to be able to rotate him. And he can play out on the left wing. I think he got a goal for us against uh, Cape Verde. Uh, which was real nice, and that's earned him his spot, really. So we'll take a look at the squad we've taken to the African Cup of Nations in the next episode. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hopefully you like this video in particular. It's a little bit 
a little bit something different before we dive into the African Cup of Nations. Thanks for watching.